Chapter 19 As Yvonne was about to continue the conversation with Daryl, Grandmother Linden smiled and walked toward Lily while holding a wine glass. Everyone stopped eating when they saw the old lady walking over. Lily, bud, Granny wants to ask you something. The old lady spoke slowly. Ask away, Granny, Lily said. Grandmother Linden nodded. Lilybud, since it's Granny's birthday today, can you promise me to go and negotiate with Platinum Corporation? We'll stand to earn a lot if they assign us the task of managing Giselle's styling. Can you agree to that? This? Lily did not know what to think, but she secretly peeked at Daryl. Her earlier efforts in securing the cooperation with Platinum Corporation was credited to William, which had upset her tremendously. Daryl had instructed her not to agree to Grandmother Linden's request. Sure enough, she saw Daryl shaking his head. Lily gritted her teeth. If she were to listen to the loser, she would have to reject the old lady in front of so many people. Yes, Mom. Samantha stood up all of a sudden. Leave this to Lily, bud. She'll live up to your expectations. Good, the old woman smiled. At that moment, no one expected Daryl, who had been sitting quietly by the side, to stand up suddenly. Not a chance. His cold words sounded extremely harsh. Lily was the one who first negotiated the contract, but her efforts had been robbed by William, Daryl said coldly. My wife only comes to mind now that Platinum Corporation doesn't recognize William, right? You? What did you say? The old lady pointed at Daryl and was extremely furious. Members of the Linden family looked at Daryl as if they were looking at a mentally deranged individual. Had he gone mad? Did he have any idea where he stood in the Linden family? He was nothing more than a live-in son-in-law. Even the Linden family's dog had a better life than him. I've tolerated you for a long time. William finally could not take it anymore and jumped out all of a sudden. What the hell are you doing? Who are you to call the shots for Lily? Are you here to cause trouble during Granny's birthday? You dress like crap, give Granny a shitty fan, and now you're trying to interfere with our family matters? I'll fucking kill you! William struck a fierce punch almost immediately after finishing his words. He seemed to have put all his strength in the punch. William was deeply cherished by Grandmother Linden and had been pampered since young. Such an upbringing had spoiled him rotten to have a huge temper. When he was in school, he was always fighting and was the school's number one bully. Although he is now an adult and delved into the business world, he was still renowned as someone who could hold out his own and know many of the big bosses in society. Daryl is toast! He's going to leave here on a stretcher! Serves him right. No one's going to stop him from getting beaten up. Murmurs were heard, and everyone tried hard not to laugh as they eagerly watched the excitement unfold. That punch could kill a bear. Daryl's pupils contracted sharply. Rather than shrinking at the oncoming punch, he remained motionless. Quick, run! Lily did not expect herself to advise that loser. She felt uncomfortable to see him being beaten up after living together for three years. Trying to fight, even though that's all you got? Daryl said coldly. William's fighting style was like a street gangster. The punch might be packed full of power, but he could dream on if he thought that he could hurt me with it. Daryl smirked slightly. The Darby family's children were required to keep themselves fit since young. Daryl had studied Wing Chun at the age of seven. Li Shan, who was a 23rd generation practitioner of Wing Chun, had taught Daryl for an entire year. Although he dared not claim that he could fight against 10 people, dealing with two or three ordinary brutes was not a problem. Thud. Daryl raised his arm to block, but William's fist struck directly past it. In that split second, however, William suddenly howled out loud. Uh -uh! 
Feeling as though he had struck an iron plate, he thought that he had broken his arm and was left without any energy. He dropped to the ground and started rolling about in pain. What? Everyone's mind went blank. None of them saw how William fell. Did Daryl, a person who had done only housework for three long years, have that kind of skill? Who would have known? Just you wait, Daryl. Just you fucking wait. William shouted in despair. He took out his cell phone, dialed a number, and shouted into it. Bro, bring two cars of people here. Now, now, bring your men. After ending the call, William gritted his teeth, stood up, and pointed at Daryl. Don't you dare run away. Wait right here. I'll kill you today. The crowd was quiet. Everyone knew that William was a man of grudges. Things would not end well for Daryl after he had provoked William. William was not attempting to scare Daryl when he made that call. Despite that, the crowd was mentally prepared to watch things unfold. The entertainment value would only increase if the situation escalated. No one could care less about that live-in son-in-law. However, Daryl ignored William completely. He merely looked at the old lady and said, Granny, don't you think it's unfair to Lilybud? All the credit that should have gone to her was given to William, and Lilybud only crossed your mind now that Platinum Corporation will only acknowledge her contributions. Lily won't accept this task. Please look for someone else if you want to continue negotiating with Platinum Corporation. You? You? What did you say? Grandmother Linden pointed at Daryl. What are you? How dare you make decisions for Lilybud? What right do you have? I'm her husband. Daryl spoke coldly, prompting rumblings from all around. At that moment, Lily was visibly trembling. Shell-shocked, everyone looked at Daryl with a complicated expression. How could a loser who lived by the Linden family's grace say such a thing? You're her husband? Grandmother Linden burst out laughing. Okay, let's ask Lilybud whether she recognizes you as her husband. If she does, I won't be her grandmother in the future. If she doesn't, you'd best be getting the hell out of here. Everyone's gaze turned to Lily the instant Grandmother Linden said that. It was a simple and straightforward this or that question. One was Grandmother Linden, and the other was her nominal husband. Lily clenched her fist tightly and could not say a single word, as if her throat had been blocked. Slap! Under everyone's eager gazes, Samantha stood up and slapped Daryl's face hard without warning. The slap was so sudden that Daryl staggered and nearly fell to the ground. His cheek glowed red. Granny's right! Who do you think you are? She pointed at Daryl and yelled. You're just the Linden family's dog. Who gave you the right to make such a ruckus? You say that you're Lilybud's husband, right? Then let me ask you this. What else do you have except for a marriage certificate? You've never even held Lilybud's hand in the past three years, have you? You think too highly of yourself. How dare you point fingers here? Get out! <laughs> the people around tried their best not to laugh. Things were getting exciting. In the past, Daryl would have just apologized. Everyone looked at him, but what they saw was a little grin forming at the corner of Daryl's mouth. He glared intensely at Samantha with a rather terrifying look. Lily looked at Daryl incredulously. In their three years of marriage, she never foresaw that the always weak Daryl would one day come to be like a stranger to her. Daryl smiled and looked at Samantha. I've been married to your daughter for three years. During this period, I've worked hard, even if I never achieved anything. Did I ever complain in these entire three years? Well then, if you don't even remember the good things that I did, so be it. Daryl clenched his fist tightly as his voice echoed throughout the crowd. Perhaps it was my doing that Lilybud and yourself have been looked down upon by others. 
With this slap of yours, we're both even now. You've always wanted me to leave, right? All right, then. I shall leave. Daryl shot back coldly. He got up and left as soon as he was done talking. The crowd was shocked. No one thought that the loser would say such a thing. Nobody stopped him either, since everyone in the Linden family wanted him to leave. However, William jumped out just as Daryl approached the door and began pointing at him, yelling, You're just gonna fucking leave like that? We haven't settled our scores yet! You can go, all right, but you'll have to go on a stretcher! The sentence concluded with a couple of black vans halting to a stop at the entrance to the villa. The car doors opened, and more than twenty strong men got down holding baseball bats and steel pipes in their hands. Mr. Harry! William shouted as he walked over quickly and called out to the leader. The man nodded, holding a machete in his hand. Who bullied you? It was this idiot, Mr. Harry. Hit him and make him kneel, William shouted. Daryl happened to make eye contact with that person and barely stopped short of chuckling out loud. Harry, Harry Crocker. The bro that William called was indeed Samson's godson Harry, who had seen firsthand what happened at Moonlit River Bar. The crowd stirred in excitement and everyone was standing. No one expected William's connections to be so far-ranging that he could even invite Harry there. Harry was notoriously ruthless, and the odds were against Daryl. Daryl, get out! Lily had lost all reason by then. She stood up and shouted to warn Daryl, 